Okay, <clears throat> the end is near. We have just a small number of hours between us. Uh, oh, crap. Uh, oh, old television show for Monday. I do. I, I selected one, but I forgot to put it on my desktop. So I'm going to have to push it to Wednesday. All right. But I got one in mind for you. This, this one's a real stinker. You're going to like this one. Um, yeah, so I'll do the TV thing on Wednesday. So we have today... We have Wednesday. Between those two, we have Tuesday, which is assignment 12, the Evaluate Three Computer Science Posters. That session is going to be, it's my understanding, it's going to be in the area between Langdon and O'Connell, so probably out in the courtyard there. And uh, my guess is it's there are going to be enough people where it runs down the hallway because it isn't just computer science students and SIN students, it's also... Uh, the various other college, not colleges, various other departments in the college, uh, the various en engineering <clears throat> departments and so forth. So make sure that you're, again, I've said it before, make sure you're selecting either computer science or SINs projects to, to do it on. Um, and that's between two and four. And what else did I want to say? Okay, yeah, so today, give me your questions. Wednesday, give me your questions. Friday, as I've said before, is not a class day per se. I will be here to talk about things, as I've said before, in my promotional materials. Uh, between, It'll be talking about things ranging from the Cold War to the price of cars. It'll have nothing to do with C++, very little to do with C++. Uh, and as a result, I don't expect anyone to show up on Friday. Or let me rephrase it, should you show up, do not expect to be schooled in C++. Um, so that's what I have. I did post, it, if you didn't read the announcement, I did post a sample final from last semester. I couldn't find the one from the previous semester. Uh, things were kind of getting changed up. And so that one fell through the cracks for that reason. But I think the one is sufficient. It looks very much like the midterm, uh, going to be the same level of complexity. So if you have any questions on that, I'm happy to entertain those on Monday or Wednesday as well. Uh, I would, I, I certainly have a bunch of stuff I could talk about, but I've pretty much covered the core of the material I want to cover at this point in 111. And so to the extent that you want to drive what I talk about, I'm uh, definitely uh, very happy and encouraging to take your questions. So, questions about C++ or Administrivia or anything like that? Yes? Uh, yeah, just send, send me an email and I'll give you an alternative thing to do. Um, I know I have one email queued that I'm remembering now. I think it was sent yesterday. You didn't send me an email yesterday, did you? All right. um, <clears throat> yeah, just send me an email and I'll give you something alternative you can do. Other questions? Um, question eight of the exam last year. Mm -hmm. um, is the problem is that the race starts at zero? Uh, yeah, let's take a look at that. Actually, I may have it on a PDF if I can bring up. Number eight. Okay. Yikes. What is wrong with the following piece of code? We have a 10 element array of integers. Yes, and that's exactly right. So if I was to loop through this, the first element would be index 1, or the first iteration would be index 1, and the last iteration would be index 10. So that'd be going from 1 to 10, when in fact it should be going from 0 to 9. So yes, that's precisely the problem with that code.
Other questions? Nothing, nothing on project four. Yeah, that's what we're finishing up here. Or starting up here, whatever your way of doing it is. Can you just uh, go over a quick uh, overview of what we're doing with project four? Uh, yeah, a, a quick overview of, of Project 4. So it's building off of Project 3. And Project 3 had been <laughs> oh, look at that magically appears. Uh, so Project 3 we had let me catch my bearings here. Here's the depot. You had to create a depot. It has a vector of workers, uh, or it has a, a vector named workers that consists of a bunch of employee pointers. The reason they're pointers is because you have to read the employees out of a file and allocate them using new and push them onto the vector, and new returns the address of where it allocated memory. So that's why we're dealing with pointers. Uh, each of those employees will have a set of exceptions, meaning a set of integers, and that's being filled up by going through the, immediately after you fill up the employee file, you're filling up the, um, the exceptions, so you, excuse me, immediately after filling up the employees from the file, you're now filling up the exceptions from the exception file. And recall the exception file is in pairs, it has an employee ID followed by a, a number, which would be an equipment ID. So you just need to, as you read in each employee ID, you have to find the right employee in this vector of workers. When you find the right employee, you tell them to take this exception. And that's the bulk of the third project, uh, getting this, this structure set up of a vector of employees and then each employee having a set of exceptions. The final thing was to have the depot would have a assignment report function, which would then spit uh, the, the basically the employees out to the screen to look like the report. So everything's in place except equipment. So what Project Four adds is Project Four adds equipment, and. What you want to do is you want to, I guess the easiest way is to try to give all the equipment to every employee, starting with the employee with the lowest grade. So you read in the equipment list? So you read in the equipment list. I think there are a couple ways of doing it. You can, uh, let, me, let, me, let me take some notes here. How to attack the equipment in Project 4. Goal, to assign all of the equipment to the employees. Leftover equipment goes in the unassigned vector, uh, equipment vector, which is uh, a member, right, a private data member of uh, depot. Now, how to do this? Method one. I'll call it method A. One, uh, read in entire equipment file into unassigned vector. Two, for each piece of equipment in unassigned, Huh? Yes, each piece of equipment has a grade required. Uh, for
for each piece of equipment, iterate through all employees. Or no, how do I want? I want to. I want to do this the other way. Iterate through all employees, sorted by rank. This would be two point one. Uh, for each employee, for each employee, iterate through pieces of equipment. Ask employee to take the equipment. If answer is I took it, also known as true, then remove from an assigned vector. And as I kind of do this through my mind, I think that there are going to be problems with this algorithm. You're going to have to, to make this work, you're going to have to iterate through eight pieces of equipment in reverse order. Why, you may ask. I guess I'll talk about that. <coughs> Method B. up equipment file, read in a, so for each line in file, read in equipment info and create equipment object using new. Some of that's implied here. I didn't go to that detail here. Iterate through. I just basically want to repeat. Iterate through this one. 2.2. Iterate through all employees sorted by rank for each employee. If answer is I took it, um, I guess that I have to bow out of this loop here. If, if no employee took equipment, took the piece of equipment, push onto assigned, uh, unassigned vector. Open up the equipment file. So there's a piece of equipment described in each line of the file. So for each line, you just set up one of your standard read in a file loops, right? As long as you haven't reached into file, that kind of thing. You read in enough pieces of information to create a piece of equipment. You go ahead and create that piece of equipment using new. Now you create, you're inside of this while loop reading in the file. While you're inside of that while loop reading in the file, as soon as you've created a piece of equipment, now you create essentially a for loop. 
and you loop through all the employees. And you ask each one, take equipment. And I think, did I just call the method take equipment? That would be in the assignment write-up. I think it's take equipment, and it takes an employee pointer as an argument, and then it returns a Boolean as to whether or not the equipment was taken. And so you ask each one, can take it, take it, take it. Uh, you need to make note if one of them says, I took it, because if one of them says, I took it, then you're fine. If nobody took it, then you need to push uh, that piece of equipment onto the unassigned vector. When I ask an employee to take a piece of equipment, again, I could do the role play up here, and I could hand the person a hammer, and when I hand that person a hammer, what are the two things that that person needs to do before deciding whether or not the hammer can be taken? Check the, right, the employee will look if we kind of simulate what I did with the previous role plays. We'll look at the clipboard to see what his or her grade is, and then we'll ask the equipment, what is your grade required of the hammer, and we'll do that comparison. So if the grade of the hammer, if the required grade is below or equal to my grade, then I can take it, and then I, I add that to my tools vector, and I return true. If that fails, then I have one more check, which is exceptions. the exceptions. So you ask, you ask the hammer, can I get your ID? You get the ID. You now see if that ID exists in the set. If it exists in the set, then great. Add it to your tools. Return true. Otherwise, you're unable to take that piece of equipment, and you return false. When you add it to your um, vector of tools, do you exactly call like the um, in this case, I, I wouldn't use the catcher's mitt terminal, uh, terminology. Uh, what do I want to call that? Analogy. The oven mitt. The oven mitt. That's right. <laughs> Things are just heating up here. Um, I'm going to go with oven mitt from now on in the future because those are that actually was what my drawings were looking like, isn't it? Um, no, the, the, the reason I use the, the analogy of the MIT is because I'm calling a function and I, I'm trying to get it in your head that a lot of these functions are going to give things back and you have to be ready to catch it with something. In the case of adding uh, of, of these checks, I, I'm not seeing that there's a MIT involved. This is true or false. Yeah. Uh, so getting back, if I had a preferred method, um, they each have their, I think they each have their difficulties. The most difficult thing in method A is that you have to figure out how to iterate through the equipment in reverse order. Through the, I should say you have to learn how to uh, iterate through the unassigned vector in reverse order. Uh, and the quirk with this one is that I'm iterating through all employees asking each to take the equipment. And so the, the key thing there is if I'm standing up here and I have five employees, I say, can you take this hammer? No. Can you take this hammer? No. Can you take this hammer? Yes. And maybe it's a dumb loop and I ask two more times to the last two employees, can you take this hammer? Can you take this hammer? Um, Oh, actually, yeah, that's that's where the quirk is. So you have to you have to be able to if employee takes it, then break out a loop. And how do you break out of a loop? Using break. You need to do that because if the lowly employee takes the easy piece of equipment, then you don't want the other employees taking it as well. Uh, the, what makes this a little difficult is you need a you need to create a flag here so that once you leave the loop you can examine that flag and see whether or not an employee had actually taken the piece of equipment or whether you need to push it onto the unassigned vector. You start with um, employee with the highest rank first, right? Start with the employee with the lowest rank. And so there has to be some sorting there and. Uh, I talked about this in a previous class, but I'm happy to, to rehash it 
which is you need to you need to call the sort function, which is a in the algorithm standard library, and you need to provide it a function that will do the sorting for you. We'll do the comparison, right? Compare one employee's grade to another. Could you explain why you have to do the um, the reverse order? Yeah, I, actually, I'm very happy to do that. Why do you have to do it in reverse order? It seems like kind of a, a request out of the blue, doesn't it? I'm going to bring plug in my drawing for this because it is much easier to illustrate than to describe in words. Let's also, the unassigned equipment is a vector, right? So if I type C++ vector, let's get a little idea of how we would do this. There should be something... Maybe it won't even let me do it. Is it going to let me... So it may be that the vector just isn't going to be flexible enough for me to push back, pop back, erase. That's what I want. It removes from the vector either a single, single element at position Let me see if I can find the text that says why it's important to go in reverse order. Um, iterator validity, this is my concern. Iterators, pointers, and references pointing to position uh, are invalidated with all the blah, 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 blah. Come on. Um, yeah, so the, the, basically what it, it's saying that iterators beyond a position where I'm doing a race are invalidated. Uh, any any sort of reference to the part of the vector before where I'm re erasing an item are still valid. So let's talk about why that is. I create, here's my array. I'm going to draw it, um, I'll draw it horizontally. And I'm going to use uh, characters for the contents just for the, the fun of it. I've been using numbers quite a bit. This is what they mean by supporting different learning styles. You use different different variable types for different examples. So for those who learn better by seeing characters, this is a nod to you. So that's a little instructional design joke. I'm sure there's a reason why I didn't get any laughs. I got it. Pause, make sure I'm not spilling anything naughty without realizing it. All right, so I've got characters in here. So how would I, what if I want to delete anything that is, a, I don't know, a, a vowel? Mm. You know, making it too easy. I don't want the vowel to be the first one. Let's make... Let's make the vowel the third one. So we'll put a vowel here. This will be W. This will be P. All right. So how would I? How do I iterate this? I say for int i equals zero, blah blah blah, to less than 
whatever this is called, we'll call this vec, vec dot size. And then we got a da da da, we got a plus plus in there, right? Everyone's on board with this. And uh, then I want to say if vec sub i is an a or vec sub i is an e and so on for all the vowels. If I match a vowel then I want to call this erase function here. And all I have to do is provide the position. It says it wants an iterator. I wonder if an integer is going to work. Let's write a little, let's actually code this up. So if I include vector, here we can run a quick test. Vector v, uh, vector of characters v, vec. And to do my test, I'll just say vec dot erase 20. I'm not going to run it. That code's going to bomb out on me. I want to see if the syntax is correct. And no, it doesn't want it. It actually wants an iterator. Oh, it's saying no matching member function. So let me, using namespace standard. Um, yeah, it, it wants a proper iterator. All right, so for me to make this fly, I'm going to have to do that version where I say I need a an iterator for a vector of characters, and I'll call it it. And then you have to have your for loop, right? So you say for it equals vec dot begin. It does not equal vec dot end plus plus it. And then what I would do is I would say if vec sub i equals a or vec sub i equals not i, if um, that seem this is seeming really weird. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Uh, I'm getting way too complicated. This is all I want. There we go. Make sure that works. Yeah. All right. So you. This is how the algorithm looks. Fill up the vector. P-W-A-R-X, Quarks, whoever's looking for a new band name. Quarks CT. I'm going to comment out that. So I'm going to code up this whole thing and then we'll show the bug and then I'll show pictorially what's happening. Let's make sure it works. Uh, what do I got going here? Yeah, oh, I never included IO string. All right. Let me run. All I'm doing here is printing out the contents to make sure it's working. Let's make sure it's working. There are all my letters. Um, so I create a vector. I'm creating an iterator. I'll put the iterator creation down closer to where I use it. It's a little bit better style. 
create the vector, I fill the vector full of characters, I create an iterator, I'm going to iterate from the beginning of the vector to the end of the vector, and I'm going to print out whatever the iterator is pointing at in each loop. So there's my sanity check. Now that I'm done with the sanity check, I'm going to, uh, I'll do this as kind of to divide my outputs. Now I'm going to create a loop here where if it's an A or an E, and I don't have an E, all I have is an A. If it's an A, then it's going to erase that location, yeah? Uh, let me add another one. Let me add one right here. Let me see, how can I make this screw up? It's going to go back and put it there. All right. There, so I have P, W, A, E, R, C, T, and I should erase the A and the E. I'll do my printing routine again afterward. Print everything. Print everything. Delete A's and E's. Print everything. P, W, A, E, R, C, T, P, W, and the E did not go away. So the question is, what is wrong with my loop? And what is wrong with my loop? Here's my E right here. So I'm looping through. It's not P, so I loop not W I loop, I hit A, it is equal to A. So I'm going to run this and I'm going to erase the item at the iterator. The way that works under the hood is the E is copied here, the X is copied here, the C is copied here, the T is copied here, right? And then some inside of here, the size is reduced by one. So this is where my iterator is, and I just removed this item. Now, at the end of my loop, I finish my loop, I come back up, I add one to iterator. So when I add one to iterator, it goes to right here. But note that the E shifted down when I deleted the A. So now, it's the X that it's checking, the C and the T. So I, I, missed, I missed that E when it shifted down. So the, the short answer so why this is failing is because of the way vectors work under the hood. They work the way arrays actually work, because it is an array under the hood, is that if you delete something from the middle, you have to shift everything above it down. That's where this funky statement came from that I kind of mumbled at, is uh, things beyond are invalidated, things before are guaranteed to keep referring to the same elements. So you can see how that is. This stuff, there's nothing wrong with that stuff when I delete A. However, anything I may have been pointing to up here got invalidated because it all moved. That's why you start reverse. If you start at the end, then I check, check, check. I remove the E. Everything shifts down. But I'm doing minus, minus. So the next element I'm going to check is A. And remember, anything before is still valid. Right? So if I, if I go through this in reverse order, then I don't have this problem of, everything shifting out from underneath me. I'm keeping ahead of the avalanche, if you will. Huh? Yeah, I suppose you could play iterator games, but um, I like to keep it above board here in this class, so we're gonna, we're gonna march in reverse order. How do you march in reverse order? Uh, there are reverse iterators. Let's see if it shows an example here. Can't you just change where the for statement is? Yeah, should we try that? Uh, I don't know if these iterators are bidirectional or not. Let's have a good look. So I would say I want to start at the end, and I want to go as long. I want to go to the end minus one, and that's the problem, is I don't know when to stop. I'd have to write a bunch of extra code, because I'd have to say, okay, once you're equal to the beginning, 
See, when, when it's equal to the beginning, I need to iterate one more time on the actual first element. And if I say keep looping as long as it's not equal to the, the beginning, then once it's equal to the beginning, I drop out of the loop, but I needed to check that beginning as well. Oh. All right, so I could do it. I would have to, I would have to basically add a line of code like, um, it would have to be something like star vec dot begin, something ugly like that. So we won't do it that way. There is, um, vector reverse iterator, you type that, you look at this, you have something that comes up, you immediately skip all this crap and you go down to the example. And here you have a uh, reverse begin, reverse end, plus plus RIT, and here it's going 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, presumably it was loaded in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it's adding, adding one to it there. So it's adding it in reverse order. Yeah, that'd do the trick. So that would do it. Just put, put an R here, put an R here. Otherwise, leave everything absolutely the same, and it'll go in reverse order. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit tricky. Can you explain what you're saying about using uh, flags? Using flags. <clears throat> um, yeah, here's here, so this is I this is the loop where I iterate through. I have a piece of equipment. I iterate through the employees sorted by rank. Ask each one to please take the equipment, and um, I want to break out of the loop if one of them takes it. But then I'm probably I'm going to need a flag to determine this. So this is the problem from a coding perspective. Is um, let me steal some of this stuff. So here I'm looping through each employee and I say if the employee is this or this yeah my problem is it isn't working with with my dummy up characters that I have to actually write employees here's here's the issue uh, let me choose a totally different example I want to know whether I found a vowel in the vector. So that so now pretend each character I don't know is an employee. So I have all these employees and I'm looking for employee E, which is the equivalent of the employee who takes the piece of equipment, right? So I create this this iterator and I iterate through all the employees and I ask the question are you equal to employee E and if you are equal to employee E then do whatever push give them the they'll say yes I took the equipment they take the equipment and then you're gonna break and that's gonna break out of this loop here right Okay, here's the big question. If no employee took equipment, the piece of, put on, I'll put a little code here, unassigned dot pushback the piece of equipment. Yeah, you buy that algorithm, which is correct as far as it goes. I think it's incomplete, but it's correct. 
loop through each, on line 21, I'm going to loop through each employee and I'm going to try and find employee E, or in other words, I'm asking each employee if they can take the equipment and if they can, they uh, say they can take it. That's what I'm simulating here. So this employee can take the equipment, so I'm going to break out. <clears throat> And now, now I'm going to determine if the if no employee took the equipment, then I need to push that piece of equipment onto the unassigned vector. How? And here's the question. And here's the problem. How do I know whether or not any employee took the piece of equipment? I guess there are a couple ways, but I'm thinking in more traditional terms. Say that again. Ah, oh, but, but if I have 20 employees, 19 of them are going to say false and one's going to say true. All right, so this is where I said flag. The, this is a term for exactly this kind of algorithm. What I need is um, it's very similar to a flag in, in football, right? If there's a penalty happening while the play's going, a flag is thrown. And what's the delightfulness about the flag? Assuming that you're closing your eyes and seeing it and banging your ears, as soon as the play's over, you can open your eyes and you see a flag on the ground so you know there's a problem in the play. Yes? We need something similar here where when we're all said and done with the loop, we need to be able to look and see if there is a flag on the ground, meaning that someone took the equipment. If there's no flag, Nobody took it. If someone threw a flag, then someone took it. So you just create a flag. So you say bool. I'm going to create a flag, and I'm going to say set that to what I think the default should be. In this case, false. Nobody has taken the equipment. If someone does take the equipment, then what should you do? Flag equals true. And then what do you ask down here? You don't say if no employee took the equipment. You say if flag true, oh, if it's equal to false, then, right, it depends on your logic you're looking for. If flag is false, then you want to go ahead and push the equipment onto the unassigned because no one threw the flag. So, uh, yeah, in programming terminology, you just call that a flag. It's some sort of little trigger variable that you trip if some event has occurred. What if um, you just use assignment as one of You go through and you check all the employees, and unassigned is the last one, so it automatically takes it if nobody else is taking it. Uh, so the idea is have the last one automatically take it, and what somehow make the last one be in disguise and actually be the unassigned vector, right? Yeah, it's it. There, um, I'll give you an easy solution to do something similar to that. Uh, the more difficult but fun to implement solution is you can actually, a class can be anything, right? So you could wrap up a vector in your own class, just like you wrapped a knight around a weapon. So you could wrap a class around a vector and you could give it the exact same interface as employee. You have to get into some advanced things. You have to get into inheritance so they'd have to both come from the same base class. But I mean, you could make it work and you could fool the code into thinking that it's an employee when actually it's the unassigned vector. And, and that unassigned vector could always say true on take the equipment. Yeah. I have to leave that for when, uh, after we talk about inheritance and stuff, which is a whole another at least a week's worth of classes. Um, and, but you'll get it. You'll get it. Uh, you'll probably get a little bit of it in 2.11. And if you take my 5.11, you'll definitely get some of it. Um, but let me give you a different kind of way you can do it without using this flag. Uh, what I would, you can do here is have I, I've declared IT outside of the loop, so that's good. So another thing I can say is if IT equals vec.end, then I, that means I reached the end of my loop and didn't assign it to anyone. So there's another way that it'll work. The only time IT is going to be vec.end is 
if you had no matches and you went through that entire loop. So that's how that is by definition how you broke out of that for loop. Is it was equal to vec dot end, and that there were no matches. All right. It's very, as I bring up the, the word of the day, it's very, very important that between now and Wednesday you give a real earnest effort to figure out exactly what you don't know because although I'm on Piazza and emails and all that, uh, your best chance of getting valuable uh, feedback is here in class. So you definitely want to come to class on Wednesday with questions. Okay, your last chance. All right. Oops. Uh, Robotron is the the video game. It's a well, not much to say about it. It was kind of a fun one to play. Another one I didn't enjoy too much, but I'll nod to it. I like the fact that you had to rescue a family. You just you're shooting this the constant machine gun shooting, and then you just have to swoop in and grab the kid and the mother and the father walking with the briefcases. There's this weird dichotomy there. Uh, anyway, we will see you on Wednesday and see you on Piazza. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'll be there. Can I email you Simon 11 by tonight? Because I'm still trying to figure it out. And for the life of me, I just not figure out how to lowercase letters. Yeah, that's right. I got the first program to run, not that one. Sure. Thanks. Um, I know my grade online says right now I have an A and I know there's a C.